Well, we have an exciting program today. I have my good friend here, Erin McKenzie, and this is now is the time. I'm Mary Crowley, and you know, now is the time. Things are shifting. Everything is kind of turning around, and I just want to encourage you. We have a great program today. Erin is going to be talking about his visitation with an angel named Victory. So anyway, welcome to the program, Erin. Well, it's always great to be here, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, so you know, it's been a few years since you've been on the program, but tell, you know, what's been going on. You know, when you first came here several years ago with your wife, mm -hmm. and we were driving through the 110 freeway <laughs> and going down Hollywood Boulevard, kind of share for the viewers like that first experience of even going into Hollywood, all of us together. Well, when we came to visit you, we were shifting from Scotland, being in Scotland for a few years, and we knew Father was calling us to Hollywood. So when we met you uh, in 2012, we rented the car and we're driving down Hollywood Boulevard and it was a time of the Grammy Awards. And the billboard signs, God speaks to me through billboards. Uh -huh. And it was the Grammy Awards time and it was a picture of Rihanna singing, the, the singer Rihanna, and it, she was singing out, the world is listening. So there was an instant revelation that now was the time to release the sound the Father has given all of us, and that's a sound or a song of our testimony. And so that was the, the key that opened up the door for us to come to, to Los Angeles, to Hollywood. Well, and there is a new season, but you've come through some challenges. I mean, Brenda ended up going to heaven. As actually as I was going in the Los Angeles airport, going into going to Thailand, Brenda was going into the gates of heaven at 1010. Yeah, that's right. Uh, July 20th at uh, 10, 10 p.m. I hospice my wife. She actually kicked cancer in the behind uh, the year prior, and it came back suddenly, and it took her. And we always had a saying, because I've, I've witnessed people being raised from the dead in Africa and in Israel, but we had this pact that we made that if anything ever happened to us, that we're not to pray each other back from the dead. So I honored that. In fact, we even had one of our spiritual sons come from Jerusalem, who really had the faith to see her come back to life. He came. And Father um, is so awesome in keeping what we make together in agreements as covenant, as a married couple. My spiritual son knew where we stayed, and he got lost trying to find Brenda and I. And he missed her by five minutes. But he did play the haktifa uh, on his flute over her. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Well, so now, you know, since then, your father just recently, you know, passed away, and you inherited, you know, some property. So you're in the midst of a ma massive transition before you go back to Israel in a few weeks. You know, after my wife passed or went on to glory, uh, we had this calling to start up houses of worship in Europe. And when she passed, she woke me up a week later singing, I like to move it, move it. And she told me, Spirit, How does that go? I, I like to move it, move it. <laughs> you like to move it, move it. She woke me up and Father just ignited me going throughout Europe. So that was all of 2018. And coming back this time, right back from Europe, I received a word that my father had passed away. So here I'm gaining all this traction, getting over the, my, my wife transitioning onward. She was my best buddy, you know, 33 years of marriage. So you don't have your best buddy anymore. God becomes so much more your papa and so much more your friend, even more so. But when the news of my father hit me, I was, I was totally arrested because it totally s tried to stop the momentum that father was giving me for the season of being in Europe and in Israel. Right, so we're coming into a new season, you know, like 2019 and next year is 2020. A lot of people are saying that the body of Christ or the church is getting ready to come into 2020 vision, mm -hmm. that we're coming into a position where God is aligning everything. Yes. And a lot of you watching the program today have gone through a lot of challenges. I know just in the last, you know, six or seven weeks, I mean, my trunk got broken into, uh, Ashley, and they took my laptop, they got into you know, my bank accounts, I had to close all my cards out. There's just been a lot of different challenges, but we can't look at these challenges. We have to see that God showed me that there's something really good right down the road, and the enemy's trying to throw all these smoke screens at us to get us to be distracted. And that's, that's right, Mary. Throughout all this past four years with dealing with my wife's cancer, caring for her because I, I became a caregiver, um, the enemy tried to put roadblocks in front of us at every step, but we never allowed that to, to stop us. When we could no longer live in the nations, social media became our outlet. 
and my wife wrote books. What do you do like Paul did when he was put in prison? You write books. You know, you continue onward. This season in my, in my life, it was uh, before my, my father's passing, it was gaining momentum. And I really tried to obtain that, but it just really wasn't working with my dad's estate. Uh, he didn't put me on his will. Uh, he didn't leave a will. So there was a place where I, I had to stop everything, engage with that. But in this place, am I crying out to God? I was taken into a vision where I met this angel named Victory. Okay, so you were, you were at your house. Where were you? So you were in your, your home or somewhere? And you I, was, I was in my home. I was sound asleep. Uh, my spiritual son who writes music, he's a musician in Israel, he sent me this piece of music that's going to be in a movie that's coming out soon. And it just took me instantly into heaven. You know, Apostle Paul says in the Bible, here on earth or heaven, I do not know, but I do know this. And when I was taken up into heaven, I was greeted. I was taken up into heaven in the garden. I was greeted with this 50-foot tall, huge being of light, this blue radiating light. And I'm like looking at him going, wow, who are you? And he says, my name is Victory. He looked down at me. He says, my name is Victory. And I go, oh, my goodness. He says, because you received me today, I have given you and all that are called that belong to Father, Victory. Wow, that's amazing. Well, and last night, too, we were in Hollywood. You know, I've known Aaron for, gosh, a long time. I met him in 2005, 14 years ago, with, uh, from uh, Jill Austin, who literally passed away on January 9, 2009. But Jill Austin was a major voice in the prophetic movement. And, you know, around Heidi Baker and, and a number like Bill Johnson. There's these different streams that a lot of the body of Christ, you know, that, Anyway, so all I can tell you is I had heard from God that there was going to be something in Hollywood that you were going to release. Yeah, when you called me, it just rang true to my spirit because I knew what I was carrying after meeting Victory. I was literally carrying Victory. And I had no idea how Father was going to use, us, use me to release this. But when you says, hey, Aaron, I really felt in the spirit you need to come to Hollywood to release what God has given you, I knew exactly what that was. And it was so awesome last night to be able to, to be in, at Radiance House of Prayer and to release a victory over everyone that had hearts to receive. It was so amazing. Well, what we did is we had, there was probably 30, 40 people there. It doesn't really amount, it doesn't really matter how many, but it's right between, it's very significant location. It's right there between the Roxy and the Whiskey across from Hustler. A lot of people have gotten their start at the Roxy and the Whiskey, like Jim Morrison of The Doors. You know, every major band has played at the Roxy and the Whiskey. And so this place that we're at is right there called Radiance House of Prayers. And they actually have a recording studio in it, too. So I have been there literally three years on Wednesday nights if I'm in town and we come and pray and we let the Lord move. So last night, uh, we did a Facebook Live. Aaron shared. You can actually go on Facebook and, and watch it from last night. But what was the premise? Why don't you share a little bit about the premise of what you shared last night? Well, I was driving over from Northern California to Southern California. I felt like Father was saying there's so many that have been shut down, pushed around. They have losses in their lives. They, have, they felt like blessings have been delayed. And Father told me, Tell them that we truly need to hold on to Isaiah 43, where he says, do not remember the former things. Do not remember. Behold, I do a new thing. And I'm like driving and stuck in traffic, and I'm like, Father, what does a new thing look like? And he says, a new thing looks like not remembering what yesterday was about. Lots of times, he was showing me lots of times, we hold on to yesterday. We hold on to expectations of yesterday that really hold no value if it, if it hasn't been a place of a testimony. You know, we know we have to have a test to have a testimony. But it's that place where sometimes we don't allow our testimony to be that song of power that empowers us and gives us the victory. Right. Well, and we just celebrated, you know, Passover, the resurrection time which was, uh, of course, in April. And then it's 50 days from Passover to Pentecost, which was literally 50 days where it was celebrating the 50 days of Moses receiving the Torah on Sinai. Mm -hmm. And so what do they call it? The counting of the Omer? Omer, yes. And so that is when the power came, was on Pentecost. And so Jesus said, I want you, I'm going to go, but you need to wait until you're endued with power. That's right. I believe that this is the season that God is going to endue us with power 
for the end time harvest. Isn't also at Pentecost, isn't that also at harvest time? It is. It is. I believe it's the barley. Yeah, the barley harvest. Mm -hmm. Where in the, in the fall, it's more the wheat harvest. It is. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so share a little bit more about what you're sensing that God has on, on your heart for the people that are watching. I really feel right now, those of you that are hearing my voice, you've been pushed around, you've been, you've been felt like you've been suppressed, you felt like blessings have been withheld, but I'm here to tell you that because you have victory in Lord Jesus, that I'm here to tell you that because of this visitation that I had from this 50-foot tall angel called Victory, I have seen such a shift just in this past week, because this was about a week ago when I had this, this visitation where I was taken to heaven and, and met Victory. I have had so many things fall into place, things that I've been waiting for to, to come into place to advance the kingdom of God. It has just been falling into place. And I just feel right now, those of you that are speaking, you are saying to yourself, I want Victory. And I'm here to tell you, if you close your eyes and you just hold out your hands and say, I just invite victory, the victory of Jesus into my life, I believe you're going to obtain victory. And it's going to be speedily. I believe your, your, your prayers are going to be powerful and God's just going to meet you right there. Yes, I agree with that. Well, and in, in yesterday, you know, we were here at Radiance and there was, you know, we, people were just starting to come in and all of a sudden this woman comes up and uh, she had two little dogs and was in there. And I just thought, you know, that woman looks familiar. Well, who it was was actress Diane Cannon, who uh, she had been married, you know, I guess in the 60s. We just Googled it in the 60s to Cary Grant, who at the time had been the number one male movie star in the world. Um, you know, he was before my time, too. But, I mean, she was 27. And I don't even know how old he was, but they got married. I, I think, think he was, was 61. It was his fourth marriage but all i can tell you is here diane cannon i mean she was up for oscars with um bob and whatever ted and alice and she had been in ally mcbeal i mean she uh, heaven can wait she had been in uh as we researched her today she had been a major movie star and she knows the lord so she came up there and and we had this we prayed over her she prayed over us and then she read this beautiful i mean she this poem it was so amazing Tell us a little bit about the poem that she read. Well, the poem was so amazing. It really ministered to all of us. In fact, she came in so unassuming with her two little dogs. And the poem, I think she was actually reading out of Ephesians 3 afterward, but the poem was really about hope. When she was reciting this poem, I, I was taken into the spirit, and this poem was ministering to my spirit. In fact, I wasn't even there hearing it all. I couldn't, I couldn't recite what she was sharing, but it was about hope, hope in Yeshua. And that just, that actually was the precursor to the evening that we had last night. It was so amazing. Well, and even, you know, a lot of you are, there's a scripture that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So there's some of you that are, you know, heart sick. And, but instead of hope deferred, this is the new season. I have this for you, the word I got for you. It's hope preferred. You're not going to go like, this is like having an American Express Platinum card. No more like just kind of like, just getting by. All of a sudden, God said, "Okay, no, they've gone through, the, they've gone through the transformation, where the remnant has gone through the testings. Mm -hmm. They've gone through the messes, and now they're going to have the messages and the testimonies. And we're encouraging you that I don't care what you've gone through. The Bible says you will reap if you don't quit. So it's like we're at a time of reaping. We're at the harvest time. We are. We need to press through. And this is what victory was." was speaking to my spirit. We need to believe and obtain and hold on to the promises that Father God has for us. I mean, to look at my life, losing my wife a year and a half ago and my father just this past December, and sticking to the vision that God has given, sticking to the plan, promises, and destiny in my life, it just, pers it just pushes me and persuades me to always not remember the former things. I can't remember. I can't afford to remember the former things. I have to look forward to what's written upon my scroll and just learn how to let that go into the rest of Father's heart. That's the place where everything is found. Shalom. Everything is done in his rest. I just, shaka rabbi. Yeah. I could just get, whoa. <laughs> well, you know, and I just heard the Lord say, okay, this is a word for you listening. The Lord said, you can't live your life looking in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. That's what I just heard him say. He said, forgetting the things which are behind, it's now time to press in and look ahead. Look ahead. 
Don't live your life looking in the rearview mirror because you've already been down that road and all you can do is learn from it. But, you know, like even as, you know, the famous Thomas Edison, the 10,000 times it took him to invent the light bulb, he looked at what not to do the next time and he didn't look at it as a failure. He looked that he was that much closer to success because it was one less uh, he already tried that. He goes, okay, I'm closer to my goal. So we just have to realize, even with the movie about Lonnie Frisbee, it's been 12 years, but now I'm getting calls. It's the season. It's the appointed time. It is the appointed time. And as we re learn to release things onto Father God, understanding that he's the one that carries our burdens, you know, Matthew 11:28 says, come to me all who are weary. He wants to take our weariness. He wants to take the burdens away from us so we can just bask in the sonship and daughtership that he wants us to enjoy, being childlike in him. Well, what I feel that he wants us to do in the next several minutes, I think we're just supposed to start praying over people uh, in the, that are watching right now. I feel there's going to be some words of knowledge um, and, and that God is going to give us downloads of for people that are watching. I feel that there's a man watching right now um, that I hear your name is Ted, and the Lord said this is a TED Talk that he's giving to you right now, a TED Talk. There's these famous meetings, they call them TED Talks, but God is saying he's giving you a TED Talk TED because um, th the Lord has had to strip you and there's been some pruning and you almost feel like you're just kind of like a, a pruned, you know, rose bush. But God said everything's getting ready to come into bloom and he had to set, separate you from a partner, but God is saying he's putting you on the right track and it's going to go zoom, zoom, zoom. He just had to separate you from some things that wouldn't have been good and uh, get ready. The Lord says, um, the, the word for you is green light. You're going to go all the way. Amen. Amen. I feel like there's a lot of you that have feel like you've been pregnant with something. There's a lot of you feeling like you've been pregnant, that you've been carrying, and you're overdue. And I, whoa, I, whoa, I hear fathers say that it's time to deliver. It's time to give birth to what I've given you. And as you rest in Father's presence, I believe that, I just hear this, this name, Hannah. I just hear this name, Hannah. And I just see you've been mourning and mourning and mourning, just like Hannah was in the Bible. The Father says, I'm about to birth the promise that you've been carrying, just like Samuel came from Hannah, that you're going to bring forth a, a, a mighty move of God, Hannah. So just a little longer, just a little longer. And I just declare no birthing pains in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's good. And, and I felt that there's been many that have struggled with um, <clears throat> torment against their mind. And so <clears throat> the Lord is speaking to your mind. He says that the battle is in the mind. And so that's why even the word of God says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we really have to be careful of the, the thoughts that literally mm -hmm. come in. You have to capture those thoughts. It says take every thought into captivity, then throw it out. Don't just let every, anything run through your mind. It's like you have to guard that. And so right now, I just speak that there's a release over torment, suicidal, and depression and oppression. And I just see the Lord sending that angel of victory into your house and releasing you into uh, just transformation. And also people that have children that are not serving God. The Lord said, this is the season of the gate to open where God is going to bring in the lost, the lost. He's literally left the 99 to find the one. There's going to be an influx of the prodigals coming back. To the father's house amen that's good i was also feeling that too driving into hollywood that the uh the lost sons are coming home right and you know with the lost with the lost sons and with the lost it was like the father ran when he saw the father when he saw the, the son a far way off he never quit looking for him so i believe there's a couple more people just you know the download as for you know, as I, as I mentioned the scripture, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, I actually got the name Matthew, and I feel like there's a Matthew. Matthew, you've been waiting for a breakthrough. Matthew, you've been holding on to, to, to something, and Father says that breakthrough is upon you. Father says as you receive victory, as you begin to receive victory, Father says, I will give you victory. And uh, what I see is freedom from something that's kept you bound, and I see actually these big bolt cutters just breaking you free from that place. So I just see you praising God. I see you, I see you dancing a jig. <laughs> so I just bless you, Matthew, in, in the breakthrough that Father's given you in the name of Jesus. Yes, and one, one other thing. I, I see that there's been people that, that you are in a marriage situation that isn't good. And the Lord said, and I see a woman, and you've been crying out about your marriage. And the Lord says, just give it to him. 
the Lord says, all you can do is your part. So he said, keep your heart pure, keep your heart sweet, and do it unto the Lord as you, as you love you know, your husband, uh, as you honor him. He doesn't want you to be in abuse. But I don't think this is an abusive situation. I think it's more of a situation that you've kind of grown apart. And the Lord wants you to just start doing those little things. It's the little foxes hmm. that spoil the vine. Usually it's the little things you do, either good or bad, that it's the breaking point for many. So Ed, I just want to tag off of that. I really sure. feel like God's going to give you the right language as you settle your heart with the things of God and giving this to him, Father's going to give you the right language to reopen up that line of communication that has been severed with, with your relationship. Yeah. So, you know, we only have a few more minutes left. Um, Israel, you're going to Israel in a couple of weeks. One of the things when, when the angel of breakthrough came, within three days I was able to make reservations to get to Israel. I've I postponed Israel for the last, well, since the beginning of this year because of my father's estate. And, yeah, I'm going uh, May 28th. I'll be there for about a month. Yeah, and we're actually, I just feel, we're going to be planning a tour. We're, we haven't got the date scheduled or anything, but the Lord just downloaded to me that, that we're going to have a small group going to Israel, and Aaron's been there. I mean, how many times have you been to Israel? Well, I used to live in Israel. In fact, three of my years there, I lived in Bethlehem. So I was able to, to understand the, the, the one new man heart of God there. And, and uh, I know a little Hebrew and a little Arabic. And I was able to take teams onto different various places and, and pray and, and release God's blessing over lots of different places throughout Israel. Well, in fact, why don't you release a, a, a blessing over them as we close out the program today. And then I'll finish it out. But why don't you okay. release the ironic blessing? <laughs> Ooh, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Father, I thank you, God, for all that have ears to hear and hearts to receive, Father, that you are giving them victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, thanks for coming on the program today, Aaron. And thanks for watching Now is the Time. If you'd like to sow a seed, listen, last week a few people did. It was actually pretty exciting because you're partnering with us. We're taking this gospel into the nations, and there's a lot of things. So you can go to my website. It should be on the screen. Uh, Adam put it up there if it's not, but it's marycrowley.com, M-E-R-I-C-R-O-U-L-E-Y.com. And you can uh, donate, you know, like whatever amount, 50, 100, 10,000 dollars, a million, you know, whatever. Listen, we got to think big. You know, all it is is money. And, but it is, it's sowing seeds into the harvest of what we're doing. So listen, thanks for watching. Now is the time. Remember, now is the time for you to find out his purpose and plan for your life and to take and bring forth the end time harvest for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. God bless you.